Hi. This should be really fun. So, I recently acquired a commercial grade bandsaw for $10 in an employee sale. The saw is still made today, a newer model version of it. So, I pulled the instructions for that and uh, went my way through it and kind of tuned the saw up, did some rewiring and stuff. But that's not what I'm going to talk about today. Today, I'm going to talk about what I found in the owner's manual. I'll put a better picture right there. So, I was looking through the things you can buy for it, and it says it has an air cooling system. They really intrigued me because I never thought about air cooling a bandsaw blade, so I thought, I can build that. It really only consists of a relay and a nozzle, and uh, that's not that hard. So that's what I'm going to do today. So the target of the exercise here is this door, because this mast goes up and down. That's how it drops on top of the metal you're cutting to shear it off. So the air hose is going to come up in between this fence and these guide rollers. So it's going to kind of sneak in here. If you look, there's already a hole drilled in here for the air cooling attachment. So I'm just going to use that hole and make my own. So since the whole system is going to be moving, it needs to be on the mast somewhere. So I thought, why not just use this door? So let's talk about the parts that we're going to put on this machine. The first half is just installing parts I bought off the internet. And the second half is fabricating a custom nozzle holder. So the first thing on the list is a distribution block. What this does is the air for your compressor comes in here. The air comes out here. And then I put a second outlet here so I can hook a little hose on for blowing chips off. It does have a fourth output back here that I've just capped off. So the way this block is built is you can really make any port you want in and out. This is a pressure regulator. Uh, I splurged and got the fancy version that also has a air dryer in it that pulls the water out. The knob up here is how you adjust the pressure. You, the reason is, is that I'm not sure full air pressure is the best. I don't want chips shooting all over the garage. I want enough air to shoot the chips down into the pan and cool the blade, but not so much it shoots the chips everywhere. So I thought it would be smart to put an upgrade from the one that the company proposed and put a regulator on. The third component of the system on the door is the actual solenoid. So this takes AC power in and opener closes the valve accordingly. You could have a switch that opens it and closes it manually, but if you know me, I don't like manual anything. Everything in my house is automatic, so this is going to be automatic too. And to tie it all together, I've got 25 feet of quarter inch plastic tubing, and I'm just going to cut that to length. I'm building this to last, so that's why I'm taking a little extra care here to fabricate up a nozzle bracket. So I hope you enjoy this. Now, if you listen very carefully when I turn on the bandsaw, you'll hear the clicking. I'm going to disconnect the motor so that all we'll hear is the solenoid if I did it right. Pretty much can't miss that. So let's try with an air compressor. This is cool. And then I never built anything like this before, but this is cool. So if you want a demo of this first setup, here's how this saw works. Here's the on switch, which I can't flip it on until I lift the blade. So I'll lock my... I'll lock it up. It's just a little uh, hydraulic piston. And so I'll turn my saw on. Again, my motor's unplugged because I don't want all the noise. And band saws have no friends. But if we turn on our saw, motor will be running. There goes my air. Just pretend it's cutting through something. And you'll see when this hits the bottom, 
Ta-da! So <clears throat> I converted this outlet to be switched so that this back one's on all the time. That's what powers my light that I added. And the front one is switched. And so how did I do that? That switch up there, if there's no more current, there's that switch up there, there's no current running through it anymore for the motor. That's how it was it wired originally. Now it's just an on-off signal to a contactor that's inside this unit. And I'll show you a picture of the contact later. So the contactor has two poles, one for the negative voltage and one for the positive. That's the 230 volt. I rewired the motor for 230 volt. I used the contactor. And so the output of one of the legs of the contactor supplies electricity to the solenoid. So only when the motor's running will the solenoid be open. So this was the original piece that I cut and then messed up. Then in the middle of that, I decided to take those two arms apart and clean them and realign the blade and set the blade tension. So since the blade was now cutting properly, I decided to recut one out of steel and so that's what I did here. A lot of people think that the big taps are the harder ones, but actually it's the littler ones. This tap was medium sized and it does require a fair amount of effort, but the little ones are tough. It's not because it's hard to do it, but it's hard to not break it. These bigger ones can take a lot more abuse, so actually it's the small ones that I always dread doing. Use lots of cutting fluid and make sure you go back and forward often so you don't let the chips build up. So this is the unveiling of my new Wilton drill press vise. It's really hard for me to get metal centered under the bit. I also showed this whole sequence, so it's very important to start with a centering bit and then slowly work your drill size up. You can go to a giant bit right away, but I found I get much better results and a lot less tear out if you just slowly work your way up. Plus I believe it prolongs the life of your bits. This project was the impetus for me to finally get all my taps together and organize them. I've been collecting them for years from garage sales and auctions and whatnot, and the pile has gotten too big. Check out this picture of where I ended up.
A lot of people don't know this, but uh, any standard wire strippers has a number of threaded holes. This is what they're for. You can put a bunch of smaller size screws into them, depending on what thread they are. Screw them to the length you want, and then cut them off. And then when you back the screw back out, it corrects the damaged threads. Just make sure you thread it into the threaded side. Don't go through the blank hole and into the threads, because then it won't fix the threads. So, Just a little tip for you guys. Let me put a picture up to show you what I made here. I took just a regular clamp and bent it into a circle. I would also emphasize that this piping was ridiculously easy to work with and you can remove it and insert it into the fittings a million times. I can't talk highly enough about doing it this way. This is my first foray. If you're wondering why I ran the piping this way, it's so that the door can freely open and close for checking the band or replacing the band. So after I shot this, I did a lot of playing around with the uh, pressure regulator. I decided that 10 to 20 PSI is really all you need. Plus it keeps the air compressor from constantly running if you have a, a medium to small one like I do. Either way, it seems to work pretty well and it seems to cut really nice. All I need to do now is buy a new band. Oh, and my neighbors always think it's silly that I bring another giant piece of equipment home. They're like, where are you going to go with that? I got it. Thanks for watching.